Hello, my name is Elmer Leaf, and today I'm going to show you how to program STM32 microcontroller uh, to read data from the HCSR 0 uh, ultrasonic sensor. The sensor itself uh, seems out like that. It has the trigger pin, echo pin, and uh, power pins. So, uh, what we need to do to program this, uh, or, to, or to get the info from the sensor, is basically we need to generate the PWM signal where we have 10 microsecond long high signal for and uh, all the other 900, sorry, 9,990 uh, microseconds signal is low. And uh, this, is, uh, this triggers a measurement, and after that uh, we need to wait a little bit to get back the eco signal which is uh, a signal which is high for a certain amount of time uh, and uh, the time so uh, how long this uh, signal is high so as how far the object is from the sensor and the formula to cal calculate it's it's here so basically we need to divide microseconds with 58 to get the distance in centimeters and uh, what we need for that, basically, we need to get generate the PWM generation generic uh, signal for uh, trigger signal. This is trigger, and the input capture is used to get the uh, eco signal. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open my cube MX, and uh, I'm going to start a new project. Uh, I have a uh, F4 discovery board on my desk, so which this is the board I'm gonna select, and uh, I'm gonna start like always, the clearing the bins, uh, setting the clock uh, to 160, and uh, to the timer clock to 18 megahertz. So. Uh, and now, uh, what I want to do is, uh, I only don't want to use, I want to use the UART for later, so I'm gonna al also configure that. Uh, I'm gonna use a UART 2, and uh, I need two timers, one to trigger and one more echo. For triggering, uh, I'm gonna use the uh, timer 11, uh, make the echo signal, uh, and uh, as I need to make the period to 100 milliseconds uh, and uh, the as a uh, signal must be high for 10 microseconds only it means that I need to have the value of 10,000 here at least uh, but I'm going to use a little bit uh, bigger value, I'm going to use 40,000 uh, meaning that uh, the prescaler must be 199 uh, how to get these values uh, I have another video for that check it out and uh, yeah that's it for this timer uh, I'm gonna move to the second timer I'm gonna use as well this is to get the eco signal uh, for that uh, we're gonna use the input capture direct mode and uh, we need to set the slave mode to reset mode and trigger source to the last one from the menu and uh, we're gonna check set the polarity section to both edges because uh, we are not uh, measuring the steady, uh, static uh, frequency signal b uh, but the signal length is uh, changing in the time so we're gonna start measuring when the signal goes up and uh, we're gonna end when the signal comes back down so we can get the length of the uh, high pulse so uh, and uh, we need to set the prescaler and uh, uh, counter period here as well. Uh, I'm going to set the prescaler to 80, uh, meaning that uh, uh, it will be like 1 megahertz uh, for this timer, meaning that every uh, every count from the counter period means 1 microsecond. And uh, we can measure up to 65. 1535 uh, counts, uh, which means uh, we can measure up to 65 millisecond, uh, which is uh, more than enough, more than enough for our solution. 
so now if this all is set uh, we can go to project manager put it a nice name uh, example in my case and uh, gonna set some some stuff here and I think uh, we are ready to go this time I'm gonna use the Kyle uh, ID that's because I cho uh, chose this one uh, but Kyle has some code size restrictions so if you want to make bigger programs uh, you need to buy it uh, cannot use it for free and uh, Let's start here making our code. Uh, first of all, what I want to do is uh, I need to copy some lines for uh, printf, so I'm gonna copy them from here. It's basically the same as with system workbench, just some minor adjustments uh, made. And this code is going to go up here for me. And uh, we need to include in Kyle the standard. Uh, input output uh, header as well. So now we can use printf and uh, for my code, uh, as always, uh, we need to start our timers. Base start, and we have two of them using 11 and 8. So we're gonna start them, and then we need to start uh, pwm. for uh, 11, 11 timer and uh, and the channel as well don't forget that team channel one was it so and uh, for input capture we're gonna use another function it is called the hull team input capture start and uh, we have a timer 8, channel 1 and 2. So now we need to make some variables. Uh, we need uh, three variables for uh, for uh, unsigned ints. We need echo 1, echo 2 and delay. And we need uh, two load variables for distance, this x and this, this one and this 2. So Now, uh, oh one more thing we need to do here, we need to set the team uh, 11 uh, capture compare register value to 3, so it will be, it will generate now uh, 10 microsecond signal every 100 millisecond. So, uh, let's uh, get our uh, values every 100 milliseconds, for that I made the delay uh, variable. I'm gonna use I'll get tick function and the delay variable I can measure every 100 milliseconds, so I if, I, if I'm using a hell delay function, the processor will just uh, do nothing else when it's uh, in this function, so this is a better way to do it if I'm using the while loop in main. And we need to give the new value to delay as well uh, every time they uh, to the next following uh, function. So uh, equal one will uh, be captured with the function I'll get the read captured value. channel 1 and uh, equal 2 is a channel 2 uh, yes and uh, the distances are calculated uh, from equal 1 and equal 2 as we need to divide them uh, with 58 And uh, at the end, we just need to print everything out so we can see what we are doing. So I'm going to print out take one. Uh, it is the unsigned int. Uh, 
this one, which is uh, the float. Then we go do, and at the end, distance do as well. And let's uh, put the uh, variables. Uh, sorry, uh, it's equal one, equal. Sorry, this one, equal two, this two. So is it. This two. So is it. Um, yeah. Okay, it should be correct now. And uh, with this code, uh, let's build it. Download it and uh, let's see what uh, what we get from the HM and I have a logic analyzer connected as well so we can see what is happening here as well. Uh, let's zoom a little bit in. Uh, as you can see that uh, we're basically generating the 10 microsecond uh, triggering and uh, you can see that uh, Eco one, for example, is about 400 microseconds, and you can see that it is basically 400 here as well. So the distance should be about six centimeters. But uh, today, luckily for you, I have also connected my webcam, so I can show you a little bit example uh, with a uh, Eco two or uh, or second uh, uh, sensor. If I put, for example, an object. Uh, 10 centimeters. Uh, we can see that the distance two is measured to be 11 point something. Uh, so it is. Uh, it has some error. Uh, but if your uh, solution doesn't need to be ex very precise, I think it's uh, precise enough. Only about 10 percent of a failure. Or uh, uh, yeah. So and uh, if let's move a little bit closer. I think on three centimeter, it's actually measurable. Uh, it says 3.5, uh, and if I get a little bit closer, uh, it will like, um, yeah, it's, it's getting confused a little bit. So uh, I've tested it, and I, I would say that three centimeters is okay. Right now it's on four, and uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty much as it is. So uh, we can be sure that it's working, and if we put something in front of the second object as well, we can see that the distance is growing. Uh, smaller as well. So this is how I do it. This is how I program my STM to get the info from uh, this type of uh, ultrasonic sensor by using PWM and the input capture. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.